All right, hi everybody. This is John Meadows, and today I have with me my training partner Dave Tate, and from South Africa, my friend Andrew Hudson, IFBB Pro Bodybuilder. And today um, I'm just going to we're going to just explore one topic, and the topic is weight gain. A lot of people out there are hard gainers, and specifically, we want to talk about what are the you know what are the ways you can gain weight. So I wanted to ask Dave. Dave has competed in uh, <clears throat> several weight classes and somehow he had to get from one weight class to the next one. So Dave, let's just get right to it. Uh, what are some of the things that you have done to break through weight gain plateaus and take your weight up? Well, first off, John, there's no such thing as a hard gainer, just a no brainer, which means they don't have the brains to do what they're supposed to actually do. All right. Second. I can give you the politically correct answer and say you need two grams of protein, da 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 da. But the one thing that I found consistent with everybody I know is at some point in time when they were trying to gain weight and they got a plateau, they all had to eat their ass off to, to, to gain weight, you know, to get heavier. So that means eating everything you can possibly eat to be able to get bigger. And the thing is, yeah, you're going to put on fat, but let's just say, for example, Somebody goes from 100, and by the way, every fucking one of us can go back to when we were in high school and find a picture when we didn't work out to be that skinny guy, the hard gainer. We all have the hard gainer picture. I got one, you got one. You just need to put it out there and then put a picture of you like five years later and say, I went from here to here because of this great plan. Yeah, you start working out. So everybody's got this stupid before or after picture. Anyhow, when, when all these people who are selling those programs, the, the miraculous weight gain programs, what they never tell you is when they, they all, the story is always, always, is always the same. I went from 150 to 210 and I felt like shit. What they never tell you is what their lean body mass was when they were 210. It might have been like 180. So they went from 150 to 180 lean body mass, felt like shit, but then they lose weight because they can't hold it. Then they find their way. And then they have their jacked picture of them standing there where they're about 170 lean body, you know, okay. lean body mass. So they actually lost 10 fucking pounds yeah. from doing it the other. See what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So with that in mind, there are ways to lean gain, but you got to be at the upper, upper epsilon of the spectrum. You know, you have to pay your dues by eating a lot of food to get there. I started competing weighing 181. And then the last competition I did was 312 to 320. I had a spell where I, for the life of me, no matter what I tried to do, I could not get over 270. And my squat sucked. And Louie's telling me, you got to gain weight, you got to gain weight. You know, with your height, you need to be 350 or whatever the fuck it was. And I mean, I was, just like everybody else, I was trying everything. You know, drinking shakes and just, I swear to God, you drink a Mega Mass 2000. Oh, yeah. Yeah, then you're making shit in 2000 about an hour later. It's like it's coming through. You know it's going straight through you. So nothing was working. I was trying everything. I was even trying to slow down my metabolism by moving last if you could slow your metabolism. You mean like just walking slower? Like just not going anywhere. Walking slower? Yeah, like okay. skipping class. <laughs> you know, not going to the just... <clears throat> so J.M. Blakely at the time was known for going from like 198 to 320 and then back down to 198 in a year and breaking world records all the time. So I asked him one day in the gym, after struggling for so long, how in the hell can I go and break this plateau? Because I'm trying everything. And he didn't give me the answers like, well, you didn't increase your calories. He just says, you know, Dave, I've never told you the JM Balking secret, have I? I'm like, no. Okay. No. Listen up, secret time. So he pulls me out to the parking lot because he doesn't want this shit even shared in the gym. This is Westside Barbell. So I'm in the parking lot and he says, okay, here's what you got to do. First, you need to promise me that you're at least going to try for a week. I said, I've got no problem with that. Do, that. do anything for a week. And he says, all right, here's what you got to do. It's very simple. Every morning you're going to go to McDonald's and you're going to get three sandwiches. I don't care what they are. You're going to put three packs of mayonnaise in each sandwich and a hash brownie inside each sandwich. 
That's your breakfast. You're going to eat that every morning. So three packs of mayonnaise and a hash brown inside the sandwich. Inside the sandwich. Each of the three sandwiches. Every day. Okay. And then for lunch, two orders of Chinese food, but I was not allowed to go anywhere that said no MSG. I had to find the place that had the MSG and then use extra soy sauce. Okay. So eat that until I couldn't eat anymore. Like until you physically got sick? Yes. Okay. Just, just, yes. And then there, there were no... There are no options. That's breakfast and that's lunch. The dinner was the only place that I had options. Now, I'll get into dinner in a minute because I forgot a critical part. The critical part was I was supposed to eat one Hershey bar every hour on the hour for every hour I was awake. The reason for that was everybody knows blood sugar and glucose and insulin levels are important when you're trying to gain weight or lose weight. Well, his answer was just, just keep it the fuck high. That way there's no fluctuations. It's high. You know what I'm talking about. It's high the whole time. Sky high and so yeah. okay. Plus, if you're really full, you can just break a piece off and throw it in your mouth and the shit will melt down. You don't even yeah, have you to have eat to, it. You're right. It you just, don't have to chew. It, it just melts down. So you got 16 of those a day. So I was to go nowhere without at least three or four in my pocket. And he, he said, no matter what you're doing, if you're at work or whatever it is, you can always, no matter what you do in life, you can always take a break to go take a piss. So in the time period that it takes you to take a piss, you can throw down a Hershey bar. Even if you get to crumple it all up and put it in your mouth and let it all melt down. Okay. All right, now for dinner, <clears throat> there were options. The first option was to order a, a large pizza with everything on it. And the, the, the way this was supposed to be done is the pizza was supposed to be put on the coffee table in front of me. So I'm on the couch and then there's a TV. It's and like a stare down. It's a stare down. It's the total fucking stare down. Right. And then you had to put olive oil on the pizza. All right. Not too much. Not so it's too dabby, but enough to add the extra calories. And then before you could start, you had to look at the pizza. And then you had to think, you know, that is what's keeping me from my goal. You know, because there's slices on there. And you had to get yourself into a heightened state of awareness. All right. Because you only have 20 minutes until your brain's going to start triggering that you're full. So you need to get as far around that motherfucker as you can within 20 minutes before that starts hitting. This is a large, right? It's a large. Okay. All right. So then we didn't go actually. You started at a large. So then, boom, you go and you just eat as much. I mean, I'm doubling pizzas over and just pounding it down. Sweating. You get about three quarters of the way through. And then that's when you're allowed to sit back. But you can't leave. You can't get off the couch because you're going to look at those three pieces. you got to understand those three pieces are those three steps you did not take. You failed. To try to gain. Yeah. So you had to stay there until those three pieces were gone. If it meant you didn't go to bed that night, if it meant 1 o'clock in the morning, you stayed there until you killed that whole thing. Then when you killed it, you went to the extra lunch. Okay. All right. Now, if I got so sick of the... Progressive pizza existence. Exactly. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. You did this, right? You know? Yeah, I did it with cherry pies. So. Yeah. Same thing. It's just eating as much as you can. Now, the option, if I got sick of the pizzas, was I was allowed to have a big bowl of ice cream. It could be like five scoops or whatever I wanted, but to keep in mind that it always comes down to the calorie per bite. So if I took a spoon of the ice cream and I looked at the spoon and thought, you know, there could be some nuts on there, yeah. then I need to add some grape nuts or something to the mix. There could be some chocolate syrup on there. I need to put chocolate syrup on there. Peanut butter. Olive oil, Good salt, deal. you know, and sugar, yeah, sugar. Yeah, so I just olive. had tons of shit on there, okay. and then you would eat that. Is there like a target calorie per spoon? Are you trying to get 300 calories in every spoon? I never thought about that. It was just too <laughs> fucking hard to eat all this shit. So I stick to it for a week, about fucking puked every time I did it. But you kind of get used to it a little bit. And then after a month, I weighed 312. So I went from 275 to 312. Okay. And then after three months, my body set point changed a little bit, and, and it worked. So that's, that was the J.M. Blakely secret to gaining weight, which um, is worked for everybody that I know. <laughs> you know? And as is, 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 I come all back, everybody I know that's ever been stuck gaining weight, they all did the same thing. Yeah. You know, they all tried to eat, you know, drink the weight gain drinks and then end up shitting themselves in pieces. And then try to eat clean. And that's what I was trying to do when I was stuck at 275. I just tried to keep adding more and more clean calories. All right. And I don't know the science behind it, but it just felt like I just started sweating more and more. My metabolism just kept picking up more and more and more. And it became harder and harder to do. Now, when you're we said. actually making it harder on yourself. Yeah. So then when we said, fuck it, no more clean food, let's just go with all shit food. 
weight goes up because my metabolism crashes. My body doesn't know what to do. I, I never counted a gram of protein in my life until after I started dieting because I'm pretty sure if you're in a calorie surplus, you're, you're pretty much covering that. Yeah, you're in good shape. Yeah. So, so let's, let's, um, <clears throat> let's summarize this. For breakfast, okay, three sandwiches from McDonald's. Each one of them needed three packets of mayonnaise. And a hash brown. And a hash brown. <laughs> All together. Now, there is, was there a time limit on that? No, you just eat it on your way to the gym. Okay, you eat it on your way to the gym. So you got your, your you're loaded up. Then <clears throat> your second meal, you had to, you might have to search now to find something that still has MSG. <laughs> I just saw it. <laughs> oh, it's salt. Yeah. So Chinese buffet, eat until you actually start to get sick. Well, you want to sweat a little bit because it's going to be a little spicy. So you want to make sure that you're sweating. So okay. you want to get sick, you're sweating. A few drops of sweat on the brow. You know, the server might come over and ask you, Mr. Tate, are you feeling okay? When somebody asks you if you're feeling okay, you're probably where you need to be. Well, you should never feel okay when you're trying to do this. But they, they see the cues. Yeah. Why well, I take that wrong. You should feel okay when you're lifting weight. Okay. Okay, but that's the only part of the life that matters because everything else is intermission. <laughs> <laughs> so as long as you feel good while you're lifting the weight, okay. fuck the rest. Because right. that's what you're doing all the rest for. So, and, and when you go home, you know, sit on the couch. You know, conserve, you. conserve calories. Stop, stop thinking with this mindset. I'm going to build my metabolism up because that's just going to make it even harder. No, oh, worst thing going to do. Yeah. So then we're going to wrap it up with. Uh, we're going to start with a large piece of pizza. Everything on it that you can take. Olive oil, everything, and that pizza. You got to look at it. You got to focus. And you got to talk to it. And it's talking to you. It's definitely talking to you. It's not even really talking. It's laughing yeah, that, at you. It's kind of it's kind of chuckling back at you. You got to show who's boss. Mm -hmm. And we're going to use progressive resistance, and we're going to increase the size of the pizza. Now, let me ask you this: When you get when you eat the extra large pizza, do you win? You never win. The only time you win is on the platform. Okay, so. It's you know, impossible to win because what do you do after you eat the whole extra large? Well, you need to go to another piece. Then you start adding a small on top yeah. of the extra. I mean, it's, it got to the point where I was able to have that extra large pizza, and then four hours later, I would go ahead and add the ice cream in. You know, so it would actually be. Okay. But so that, went to I mean, that, that's a whole nother level because that's breaking 300. You know, that's only the eating at least. Yeah, most people are just trying to break like 200 or something. I'm just trying okay. to go for the upper echelon. And I didn't care how fat I got. The bigger my waist, the better. Well, fat's irrelevant. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can always take it off, which I showed that I could do. Yeah. But I'm also really good at putting it back on. <laughs> you showed <laughs> you could take it off several times. Yeah. All right. So we wrap it up with the pizza progressive resistance. And is there a time limit how long you can do this? <laughs> well, here's, here's the thing. I, I did it pretty solid to get up a weight class because that was the key thing. To get out of the 275s to get into the 308s. I never wanted to be the guy to have to diet down to the 308. So if I could stay about 290 as a set point, so I needed to change my set point about 20 pounds. Once that changed, I didn't have to do all that shit anymore. But now if I do have regrets and there's some mistakes I did make, I didn't start cleaning my diet back up after the six months or eight months of doing something like that. That's where I should have cleaned it up. I just kept eating shitty foods, you know, and just stayed that route. And then, as you get older, your body can't take it anymore. And that's kind of why I ran into the health issues I ran into. So, so yeah, there's a limit. You know, once use it for what it's supposed to be used for to get to what you want to do, and then back it off, and then start replacing it with at least 50% clean food. 50%. 50%, 60%. I mean, it's still too, it's too fucking hard when you're 270, 280, 290. You know that. I mean, when you're 280 right now, and you're probably trying to do it mostly all on clean foods, but without cheat meals, you can't do it. Tell me I'm wrong. I mean, you need cheat meals to keep the weight up, right? Now, if you were to try to be 312, how many more cheat meals are you gonna eat? You can only eat so much fucking broccoli and chicken. You know, it's just, you gotta resort to something else. All right, so for those of you who call yourself a hard gainer. No brainer. <laughs> <laughs>